Hi, it's Andy again, and this is another Firebase Android tutorial. Uh, today we're going to talk about uh, Firebase storage. So we're going to modify this new escape room activity, um, kind of show you what we're going to do. So we're going to add some fields into our um, input. We're going to add a button and an image view here. So what we're going to do is we're going to now give the option to upload an image from this escape room. So um, there's some things that we need to do to uh, handle selecting a photo from a device. Um, this isn't really going to be specific to uh, Firebase at all. It's going to be a just generic tutorial, but we're going to make it Marshmallow compatible. So if you haven't done that, this will be a nice little um, crash course on asking for permission to access the device's storage. So since we're accessing a device storage, we're going to need to ask for that permission in the manifest first. So um, add this permission here. Uh, Android name, android.permission.readexternalstorage. We're not going to write to the external storage. We're just going to read it. So there's no real reason to ask for permissions you do not need. Um, so we're going to go back into our new escape room activity. And um, I'm going to show you kind of the code. There's a little bit extra stuff to do here, but it's really not that hard. Um, basically, the first thing we're going to need to do is, in addition to what we did in the last tutorial, we now have a few extra things. So we've added a button for select to prompt the user to select the photo from their gallery. Uh, we have an image view that we're going to actually display the photo in after the user has selected it. We're going to need um, to create two static ints. We're going to need one for our photo request so that we can uh, retrieve the data later in, um, on an um, uh, let's see on activity results. And then we're also going to need a re an int for our requesting the read permission. And this isn't specific to Firebase at all. Uh, we need to create a reference for our storage reference for Firebase. Um, we're going to store the URI for the uh, file and uh, pass it on between the return data and what we're going to be uploading to our um, back end. This progress dial, uh, dialog you probably won't see. Um, you might see it on an actual device with a slower internet connection, but uh, in my testing, it's actually going to upload the file pretty quickly, so uh, you might not actually even see this progress dialog. Um, and then we're also going to grab the URL that we're going to, once we've uploaded to our backend, we're going to get the actual download URL, and we're going to store that into our database. Oh, so since we're adding an extra field into our database, uh, let's create uh, an extra field into our uh, Java object for our escape room. So create a string uh, photo URL. In our uh, in method to initialize the object, let's uh, create um, another reference here. And then uh, we're going to use these uh, later on. Um, the get photo URL and set photo URL when we're going to actually in a future tutorial display this in our main um, activity. We're actually going to put a background and make the, the UI a little bit nicer on the front. Okay, so let's go back into here. Um, so we just initialized all of our um, object, our uh, views, so our new um, button, our image view, progress bar, and our storage reference all get initialized. All right, so now when we select the button for picking a photo, we need to request permission for the first time. So we're going to go down into this request permission method. And basically, we're going to check to see if the user has a newer build then uh, Android Marshmallow, Marshmallow or newer. And then if it is, we're going to check to see 
if we've already been granted the read external storage permission and if we haven't um, we're going to then request it okay so request permission we need a context that's this context uh, the string array which is the manifest permission read external storage and we need our um, uh, static int that we're going to be using as a as a callback later so um, and then if we've already been granted the permission we just open this file picker so that's another um, method that's actually going to open up uh, the gallery where the user can actually pick up pick a, a photo uh, so we need to make sure that we ask for permission for it and I actually think I'm, I'm missing something here I'll add it in before um, I publish. All right, so so once we've requested this permission, we get a callback. So we need to actually add this uh, method on request permission result, and we get that by um, add it, implementing activity compat that on request permission result callback. So then we get this callback. Uh, with the request code, the permissions that we've requested, and whether or not they were granted or denied. So our request code is going to be uh, this request read permission. And if our um, granted, if our permission was granted is basically so grant results, uh, great length is greater than zero, and the grant result of zero is permission gr granted. We're going to open up that file picker because we're allowed to use it. If we haven't, we need to make sure that the user knows that, you know, we can't complete the request. So we're going to just display a toast that cannot pick file from storage. All right. So this open file picker is pretty easy. It's just opening up an intent uh, with an action pick. We're telling that intent that we need an image. It doesn't matter what file type. And we're going to use this start activity for results uh, with that intent. And we're also going to need um, request code here. So we're going to need this for later on in this activity result. So um, once the user actually selects a photo, uh, we're going to get three things that are um, returned back in this um, uh, method. The request code, the result code, and the data that they're passing the gallery is passing back into our activity so if our request code is our photo request because we can ask we can have multiple intents to launch up different things so we want to make sure we are specifically asking for our photo request and the result is result okay so result okay is the user picked a photo so that automatically gets returned we don't have to handle it any other way and other way and uh, we want to make sure that the data that is returned back to us is not null. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the our string of the, or actually photo URI is actually the URI. So we're just going to set to that to whatever was returned back. So we get the intent data, and then we're going to get the data. And that's going to be a URI. So we need to store that in this variable here. Next, uh, what we can do is we can display the photo that was selected in that image view. And I'm using another third party library called Glide. It's very, very easy to use. If you want to add it, you just add it this way into your uh, build.gradle file. Uh, okay, so just select Glide with, and then you need to select your context, which is our new escape room. Uh, dot this then load the photo URI into our photo this is the image view and that's it it'll handle all the stuff in the background we're going to use the same library later on to uh, display photos in the recycler view because it's very 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 fast and you're going to get nice good quality photos out of it okay so let's go back into our uh, on create method here so all this was in the in the previous tutorial on what we're going to do when we save 
Um, now we're going to add a few extra bits to it. So in order to save this photo into our online um, storage, we needed this storage reference dot. Uh, we're just going to call it online storage photo ref. This is going to be a specific uh, reference inside. Um, we're going to basically create a bunch of little folders so that we get a, like a unique location for um, this photo. So we're going to create a folder called photos and then inside that folder another fo folder with the, the name of the escape room and then inside there we're going to actually store the photo uh, name like that then we're going to give it this file name here and um, so we're then going to then push this or put the file into the database now so online storage ref photo ref dot put file we're going to put in our uri that we got returned that was returned back to the from uh, the gallery and then we're going to have an add on success listener and uh, add on failure listener so on the access listener means that everything was uploaded correctly and uh, we can then create a scenario where um, we can now store the escape room into our database with some added variables. So um, I, I didn't make this the cleanest way, but this actually works and ensures that the photo URL is actually uploaded. Um, so the, we can pretty much ignore this progress bar. We're just setting a message. You're probably not going to see that in the demo. Um, then we have our photo URL that we're going to save uh, as part of the database object is uh, this snapshot. We're gonna just going to get the download URL of the object that we just uploaded since we don't know what it's going to be ahead of time. But we can find out after it's already uploaded, we can grab that URL. And then we're going to put it as a string, store it as a string. So then in our escape room, now we've added that fourth object. So name, address, URL, and now our photo URL. And then we're going to push this to our um, online database, just like I did in the last tutorial. So none of this part has changed. All we've done is added an extra item to save. So then uh, this little code handles if it fails. So if the for some reason the photo doesn't um, get uploaded to the database, we're still going to save the escape room. We're just going to not save the URL. So um, this is just going to display a, a toast to the user of what, what went wrong. I'm going to just set the URL to an uh, empty string. Um, create our new escape room with the name, address, URL, and that empty string for the photo URL. And we're going to then push it um, to the online database. And then we're going to finish. So none of this has actually changed. So let's uh, run this and see what it looks like. All right. So we didn't really make any visual changes there. So we'll create a fake escape room. Now let's select a photo. Now this is going to ask the user for permission. We're going to allow it since we know why they're asking for it. And uh, I just took some uh, empty pictures with the um, camera on this device beforehand, so I had something to upload. So I'm going to select that. It's going to return the image, and um, that's going to run this uh, on activity result. We've returned the image URI. And uh, we're going to display that into the photo URL, or for, um, store the data, and then display the image in the, in the image view. So now when we hit save, we've got our new item that's been uh, added to our list. And when we go into here, unfortunately, this doesn't automatically update on its own for the storage. It does for the database, but not for storage. So when we refresh our page, 
we've created this fo folder called photos and then uh, with the name an another folder inside there with the unique name of the location so testing room and then here's our photo that we've uploaded so that um, the name of 36 is uh, obtained from right here photo URI that get last pass segment that's going to be 36 for some reason so and you can see your photo um, in um, what you call it in the web website so then we're going to go back to our database and see that make sure the URL for that um, photo was also uploaded correctly so here's our new item here on the bottom and it did so we have our address the name the photo URL and the actual URL for the website. So I hope you like this tutorial. If you have any questions, please let me know um, and I will get back to you as soon as possible. Thank you very much.